These two patent filings from Nikon would absolutely be pushing the envelope in Z mount lenses like we have never ever seen. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. Today in the latest, the latest roundup of what's going on in the internet in photography news, I'm going to talk about lenses. This is a lens only edition. There is so much going on in the lens space across multiple manufacturers that it's worth just for 10 minutes talking about that. Plus, I want to talk about the ongoing energy at the end of this episode, the ongoing energy that is now surrounding the Z9. I think there are people in non-Nikon camps about to lose their mind, and I think there are people in the Nikon camp about to lose their mind. And at the end of the day, it's actually in a good way because this is about a camera, but people are so excited one way or another, I think they're getting super duper excited. Let's jump into the latest. Absolutely fabulous. And I think the biggest news this week in lenses, although it's hard to pick what's the biggest, is the new 70-200 2.8 from Sony for the E-mount. Indeed, the 70-200 across any brand is perhaps along with a, say, 24 to 70, the most purchased lens for both enthusiasts and professionals. These lenses are absolute workhorses. Now, talking with a few of my colleagues over the last few years, one place that they felt the E-mount was not quite where they thought it should be was with the 70 to 200. And the previous version just was not at the level where everybody wanted it to be. Sure, it was great, it worked, it was fine, but it was starting to show its age. Check out the lads from DP Review. They talk all about it in their latest coverage. But, excitingly, here it is, a brand new 70-200 2.8, which seems to address absolutely everything and more. So let's just quickly jump into some of those specs. Indeed, it has four times faster AF than the predecessor. The Mark II is built around two pairs of XD Extreme Dynamic Linear Motors driving its two focus groups. Maximum magnification at 0.3 times up from 0.25 times, getting you a little bit closer. Super sharp, even more than its predecessor, aka more resolving power. And lo and behold, it's 30% lighter, coming in at almost one kilogram. That's an amazing effort to shave off something like 300 or 400 grams off a lens, almost half a kilo. Amazing effort there from Sony. Let's just quickly look at Sony's press release for this lens. Sony's newest G Master lens features superb resolution and bokeh with next generation AF performance in the world's lightest large aperture telephoto. Of course, it is a constant 2.8 and it has fast, precise, quiet AF and continuous AF tracking capabilities. Of course, we would expect that from Sony. And it also has advanced features for video creators. It is the world's lightest 70 to 200, although there is an asterisk, large aperture telephoto zoom lens, approximately 29% lighter than the previous model and up to approximately four times faster AF, with focus tracking while zooming improved by approximately 30% when compared to the previous model. It has professional levels of control and reliability. I suppose that's talking about weather sealing. I think this is an important addition to the E-mount lineup. It's a lens that I know Sony users have been waiting for. And as the DP review boys suggest, maybe Sony will give us a 24 to 70 2.8 update soon as well, because that is another lens in need of an update. There you go, the 70 to 200 2.8 for Sony E-mount, probably bringing the 70 to 200 up on par with the rest of its peers. That is great news for Sony users. And in some Nikon news, if you haven't seen my latest video, Nikon have dropped an 18 to 140, which is a 27 to 210 full frame 35 mil equivalent, which is going to be coming out sometime in November. It is 599 US dollars and 999 Australian dollars. Its apertures are 3.5 through to 6.3 
and I will have a copy of a preview copy of this lens in my hands in another day or two and I look forward to showing you it as soon as possible. Again, to reiterate, it is an APS-C lens. So it's for your Z50 or your ZFC, although you can use it on the full frame cameras and they just automatically pop you down to APS-C slash DX mode. So there is the next lens arriving, continuing to flesh out the Nikon Z roadmap. Now a viewer put me onto a very exciting patent filing by Nikon that's come via multiple sources and I have found it here on Petapixels. And this is a little bit crazy. This is about two potential zoom lenses. Now, let's just talk very quickly about patent filings. Just because a patent is filed, it doesn't mean that these lenses will ever come to fruition. There are many, many examples across all manufacturers of where patents are filed and they never see the light of day. These two patent filings from Nikon would absolutely be pushing the envelope in Z mount lenses like we have never ever seen. And what we have here is F 1.2 lenses, but they're zooms. And one is a 35 to 50 zoom, and the other is a 50 to 70 zoom at 1.2. Now, I can see a lot of people not being interested in this, they have very short zoom ranges and it reminds me a little bit of the zoom lens on my medium format camera. They also don't go very far. These sort of lenses are obviously going to be very expensive and very specialty. And where I can see their application being absolutely loved is actually in cinema, for example as a cinema lens. As a cinematographer, being able to jump between what is normally these prime sort of distances, a 35, a 40, or a 50, and you can move between them without having to change lenses, or you can do just a gentle, tiny little creeping zoom in, and you're being able to do it at f 1.2 through the range. This is ridiculously exciting, and from my perspective, this continues to show Nikon's thinking around how they want to move into video. Of course, these sorts of lenses would be great for wedding and event photographers. And, and lots, look, my use case, when I'm doing my street, I'm always shooting with two bodies and sometimes even three. I could see myself having the 35 to 50 and the 50 to 70 on two bodies, and that would be amazing. So to reiterate, this is a patent and that's all it is but it does show where thinking is at and where time is going into. Whether it ever sees the light of day, we do not know. But imagine, imagine F1.2 zoom lenses. So patents, you know, we never know if or whether they will happen. And it's certainly showing Nikon's intent. I'm super excited about this. And as I have said multiple times, I think once we get these basics here. This is the basics of Nikon's lens lineup, which uh, I've got a video coming up very soon. It's all about the report from Nikon, from the president of Nikon saying, we're gonna have almost 30 lenses out by the end of financial year ending 31st March, 2022, only five months away. And then I think we can start the march towards the more exotic lenses. Personally, I think the forward estimates, which in political terms or budgetary terms is the next two, three, four years, we're gonna see some super interesting lenses coming out of the skunk works at Nikon. I'm so excited. Okay, in some Canon news, we've got the RF 16F 2.8 STM and the Canon RF 100-400 to 5.6-F8 to USM. They have begun shipping. Super exciting news for Canon users. These are two really interesting lenses. I know that I would love a ultra wide full frame prime myself and that's great in the 16 mil and the RF 100 to 400 that's now arriving in the RF mount is something that all mounts need in their system. So we hope to see that across all the major systems soon. Yay! As a little bit of news, the Canon EF 1200mm 5.6L USM sold for a whopping 500,000 euros. Holy cow, that's a lot of cash. 
It's an extraordinarily rare lens and obviously a very large lens. It would cost so much just to move it around the world. A little, a little bit of an overview of this lens. The Canon Telephoto Lens EF1200 5.6 from the 1990s achieved a particularly spectacular result. Only around 20 specimens of this lens were originally produced on special order only at the time. The then original list price was already US $90,000. Holy cow. Two customers who were connected by telephone engaged in an exciting bidding war so that the lens was finally hammered for a fabulous 500,000 euros. It is the highest price ever achieved at auction for a camera lens in the world. So congratulations, Canon. There's only roughly 20 of these lenses in the world, and one of them has just been sold for half a million euros. That is crazy talk. Go EF. In some not so exciting Canon news, uh, stock notice from Canon, the RF 402.8 and the RF 600mm are in limited supply at the moment. Stock levels are very limited and these lenses will be difficult to purchase for the foreseeable future. Indeed, all camera manufacturers are buckling under the supply chain issues, whether it's COVID related or whether it's chip related, it's causing everybody problems. It's just something that I think we all have to get used to. There isn't one manufacturer that isn't suffering in one way or another. And in more patent news, for the RF mount, a patent has been lodged for a 24 to 72.8. Well, what's exciting about that? This patent shows that they're trying to make, Canon are trying to make this lens as compact as possible. As I said before, in regards to the Nikon patents, these things may never come to light, but they may. We just don't know, but it certainly signals intent. And I think that's what's most interesting when we see these sort of patent filings. It is a direction, it is a flag. And look, there are other reasons that these sorts of things are filed. I suppose it's to slow down the competition as well. And yes, I suppose it does that too. And as I said at the start of this video, I just wanted to touch on the excitement that's building for the Z9. And I just feel I have to reiterate that this is a moment in time like no other for Nikon. As I've stated in a previous video, yes indeed, the D3 was a magical moment and Nikon brought all sorts of new technologies they brought to the world from my personal perspective, having shot with digital kind of since the start of it being affordable and useful for a professional photographer, the D3 arrived and it was kind of like, wow, this is the this is 35 mil film superseded. We've now got high ISOs. The promise of digital was now actually being fulfilled and Nikon jumped ahead of the pack. It was a great moment, but of course, Nikon had previous DSLRs in the D2X and the D1 and so on and so forth. And obviously they had previous SLRs. Here with the Z9, it's new. This is the flagship mirrorless camera. Not happened before. And it happens when the landscape is different. 2007, when the D3 was announced, digital was just on this epic climb towards selling over 100 million cameras per year. The landscape was different. Everything was happy. There was champagne corks popping all over the place. These companies were rolling in sales and I suppose rolling in cash. 10 years later, or actually 14 years later on from the D3, we live in a different world. Not only is the Z9 technologically a far bigger step from the cameras that exist right now, but also it is a very, very important statement from Nikon about where the future lies. And as I said, patents show us the direction of a company, what they're thinking, what they're doing. Well, the Z9 is going to show us that in spades, one way or another, good or bad, it is gonna show us the direction that Nikon is heading in. Now, from everything I'm seeing, like with teaser trailer number two, 8K video that goes for at least an hour, or maybe an hour and a half, and as some have theorized, it's sort of essentially unlimited until you run out of space on your card or your battery goes flat. And this is without overheating and overheating in the heat. So this, th this camera, so far, is looking crazy good. I think there is a great deal of pressure building in the zeitgeist. And I think people are falling one of two ways. They're getting so excited and they're so keen to know what's going on that they're getting angry because they just want to know. 
And it's and, and then there's other people, which I think it's the, ca the camp that I sit in. I, I'm just super excited and I'm happy to let this unfold. For me, it's like going to the movies. You've just got to wait until the movie ends. And and sure, this uh, teaser trailer time is, a, is maybe going to be a month long. Let's hope it's going to be a month long. We don't know for certain. But a month is not long. And prior to that, well, it is what it is. Again, I keep hearing in my comments, people upset, people thinking about jumping ship from Nikon. And I just have to think, why are people thinking about that and talking about that now, when we, I think, are two or three weeks away from knowing so much more, knowing the single biggest step that Nikon has ever taken. So let me just say that again. Why are people angry and talking about leaving Nikon when they've gotten this far, this far in their journey? And some people have been in the system for 10 years or 20 years. They've gotten this far in the journey and you're gonna step out of it with two or three weeks to go? I just don't get it. It just doesn't seem logical. And it starts to, to me to ring like maybe a little bit insincere. If you know what's going on, if you're keeping an eye on things out there, the Z9 looks amazing so far. I certainly think it's gonna meet the market. We've got exciting lenses coming and Nikon have made statements about that. We know Nikon are in profit because they've released their first quarterly results. You can look at the president's report and you can see where they're going. Why would anybody be thinking of leaving literally at the last moment? To me, it's like you're, 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 you're playing a game and you're just about to win and you go, oh, it's taking too long, I'm gonna go. So I really don't understand the energy that's coming out right now. I think Nikon have every right to build this excitement. If this camera is a D3 moment or more, they have every right to build this excitement. I'm enjoying it. Is it possible that some of us are just too impatient in this era of mobile phones and everything being instantaneous? I like it. I don't mind it. I've been in small business my whole life and sometimes I have waited years and years to upgrade to the next big massive computer jump that I thought I needed or required. And you just wait, you wait until it happens because well, you know what? At the end of the day, there's nothing else we can do anyway, is there? We've got two options. And this is just a psychology thing. We've got two options when we're waiting. We can complain about it or we can wait and it's fun. They're our choices. Personally, I find it fun and I think Nikon are doing a great job of building hype. And if there's anything in psychology that we could take from all of this, it would be if they're building this much hype. And don't talk to me about the original Z launch. I, I think people misread what Nikon was talking about there. And now I have a video here, which is not up yet, but it will be in a few days after this one. Talking about the fact that that hype was to do with something that people misread, but I think this hype, Nikon have read the room and they know if they're gonna hype something like they're hyping it, they better deliver. This is my personal opinion. I might be wrong, right? It's an opinion. I might be wrong, but that's what I think is happening. Who knows? Anyway, this has been the latest and I just wanted to touch a little bit on the current energy which is just building and building and building and we're only halfway through this teaser period i can't imagine where people are going to be at in another two weeks time i just can't imagine everybody hang on there hang in there your photography is still as awesome as it was so just hang in there your lenses are still just as awesome as they are today everything is awesome everything is awesome everything is awesome everything is fine and I think, I think it's all gonna be worth the wait. All right, let me know what you think of all of those lenses and patents. Would you be interested in, for example, those crazy Nikon zoom lenses that are 1.2? I think that's the craziest piece of news. And if you're a Sony user, are you gonna be getting the 70 to 200 2.8, the new version? Why not? It's supposed to be better. That's what we're all into, isn't it? Better, okay. Thank you so much for being here. It has been absolutely spectacular to see you. If this is your first time here, I would love you to subscribe. So please do, please like, please share, get yourself some merch, custom made. Just click down there, it takes you to a little website. Uh, you can do whatever you like. All right, bye.